Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I am joined again by wonderful guest, an expert on Russian military and naval issues, a fantastic author of many books, and I know that he's in the process, right? Yeah. Writing another another one. And many of you absolutely love when I connect with Andrei Martianov. I'm so happy to see him again on my channel. Welcome back, Andrei. Oh, my pleasure to be with you, Anya. Absolutely. So today I will start with something very light because that was a sign, I guess. I went to grab something to eat. And I saw in this place, it's like very um, old school 80s vibe. Mm -hmm. There was there was a TV that was showing. They have those movies, old movies playing. It was a Russian movie, and in that movie, I saw Barbara Brylska, yeah, well, Polish famous actress that was playing in Russian movie. And you came to my mind because I knew we were having our interview today. And then Czterei Pancerni i Pies, yeah, the movie. She she used to play in this movie, I believe, as well. So you see, it's interesting. We talk about this in previous conversation how. Yeah our cultures were um, mingling throughout the history and even artistic endeavors as well. Andrei, let's start with the question I have from the viewer actually, because I don't want to miss this question. After our last conversation, someone asked me this and I will quote this here. My dear Anya, can you invite Andrei Martianov and ask him for his view on the new Russian Eritrea agreement one of the very strategic places in the world. I don't know anything about it, Andre. So oh, yeah, it's not Eritrea, actually. It's Sudan. It's uh, close enough. Uh, it's Sudan. Yeah, and um, Sudan, uh, after the um, enormous pressure from the United States, obviously, kind of delayed the agreement of the naval, uh, not base, it's not base. It's called, um, uh, 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 point of the material technical support, but it's essentially a small naval base, which allows you, if I remember from the top of my head, to park there, quote unquote, uh, even a nuclear powered ships. So you can put like four or five ships there and uh, even use their uh, nuclear power submarines there to replenish their, you know, mostly food and things of this nature. And it is strategic. And because obviously it uh, controls pretty much everything from the Suez Canal and to you know Red Sea and in uh, direct uh, uh, entrance into the Indian Ocean, and it also allows you to control to a large degree, to a large extent, Persian Gulf. It also covers Saudi Arabia there, so it is strategic in every single respect. And of course, when once you begin to understand the ranges of Russian weapons those cruise missiles, it pretty much covers the whole thing there. You know, up to Israel, it, you can shoot from there into Mediterranean and you can shoot it from there into the Indian Ocean. Everything is covered. And that is a very, very serious development for the United States, which it was uh, willing to sabotage as much as it could. And, but evidently uh, those people in Sudan understand where the wind blows from, and they would reward it, of course, you know. Andre, are they going to be part of the BRICS, that region? No, Sudan. I don't think so. Sudan uh, satisfies their uh, 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 criteria for uh, uh, entering BRICS, at least for now. They are very poor country, make no mistake. They are very poor and fairly underdeveloped country. Uh, they certainly not uh, Iran, which is big because Iran is actually quite economically developed. It's an extremely civilized country. And so they have a significant economy, but Sudan is not like that. So, but they certainly will be uh, trying to get into one of those organizations, including maybe Shanghai uh, organization, security organization, and things, a cooperation organization. So uh, it depends, but no, I don't see them in the BRICS anytime soon. Okay, so we answered this. Thank you so much. Now, um, Putin's approval ratings recently, approval of citizens are around 79%, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. This is very strong approval. I was wondering, 
what is his approval in the Kremlin? And do you think, is there any chance that someone in the Kremlin has any power whatsoever to remove him from, not. from his position? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. He is, uh, uh, yeah, I know the number of the almost yellow, almost tabloid type resources in, uh, in the West, which begin to speculate now about that. I actually stumbled upon similar article. We have to understand most what um, the Western press and people who speculate on that, they don't, they don't know anything about Russia whatsoever. They are merely narrative mongers. They are ignorant, they are badly educated and very uncultured. No, even if to imagine that, let's say imagine that, okay, there is some group of people who wants to remove Putin, okay? Which is of course complete baloney. They have to understand that Putin is adored in Russia. It's not about approval large majority of population view him more than just uh, the president. They literally view him as the leader of the nation. And I'm talking about it's way more than just being the president. It's like our leader, you know. It is very similar, albeit on a much different level and cultural and social level, as R Russians viewed Stalin at some point of time, mm -hmm. you know. But this is even bigger because this is the conscious choice without any propaganda. In fact, these Russians uh, arrived to this uh, despite this constant anti-Putin propaganda, which was from, uh, from the West and within Russia itself. And so when we talk about it, people, uh, it's the conscious choice of Russian nation. And not only mm -hmm. Russians, other ethnicities who are part of Russian Federation. He is a leader. And that is why, okay, yeah, you remove him, what do you have? you'll have the freaking, you know, uprising basically, you know, and whoever tries to install new regime, even if to imagine that somebody exists like that, they will be swept off power in, in no time. So. This is almost like on, sp on spiritual level too. When yeah, you're saying oh, it, this. absolutely it is. He is the leader of the nation. It's, yeah. And again, military, mili military loves him. And once you have the uh, you know, military and intelligence services supporting you, that's it. And then you have people. So who would even dare to do that? Hello? 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 Anya. Hmm. Hello. Hello. Yeah, hey, I'm back. You know, that was yeah, interesting. Something, yeah, something happened. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it happens. Yeah. It's okay. Maybe maybe the right people are listening. Yeah, you don't know. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, you know, having in mind where I am, so I hope the right people. Yeah. Uh, okay. So as as we know, by I'm the way, let's ask a question. Yes. Where are you yes, staying? Andre. Where are you staying? What hotel are you staying in? I'm not gonna answer this during the recording, Andre. Ah, okay. <laughs> You'll, okay. So let I will tell you after, Andre. Let me ask you this. Let's talk about safety. I feel very, and I truly mean it, very safe in Moscow. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't felt like this for a long time in many other places I've been to. But, and this, this I, I mean, I'm saying this in a, I don't know if I, I should see use the words humorous way, but le let's, let's just approach it seriously. However, we know the shenanigans again, Another time, U.S. Embassy recently issued the warning to the U.S. citizens not to travel to Russia or to leave Russia because of the expected attacks, terrorist attacks. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the virtue signaling, they always like the satanic thing, like a broken, broken yes. mirror, right? Yeah. Broken mirror. Tell me, what are they planning? What, what do you think? What shenanigans are they are trying to plan 
Um, what they are cooking, Andre? Uh, it's two uh, prong thing. First one is, as you correctly stated, uh, to try to um, uh, create as much tension as possible. Although after they issued this warning, guess what? A couple of days after that, some of the State Department, you know, uh, uh, functionary uh, went out and stated, oh, no, no, it's just renewal basically of the old ones. Secondly, more practical issue, United States is directly involved now in training of ISIS. So, and there are some ISIS cells uh, in Russia, which FSB, FSB didn't get to it yet. So could they be uh, uh, um, planning something of this nature? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Those people, I mean, and again, this is the only thing they want and, uh, and can do. And again, do not discount the desperation of the West. And it is desperate. I'm talking about like really seriously desperate. So could it be some kind of the terrorist activity? Well, it's always a possibility, you know, always in the most even uh, uh, peaceful times. So the only thing is now is for FSB to, de to do its job. And they were pretty good at it, you know, rather. And of course, do not discount the Ukrainian nationalists, which of course are present. They, you cannot filter out every, every refugee from Ukraine. Uh, some of them still get to Russia. And, uh, but then again, it's FSB. They know what they're doing. They're pretty good, actually. Okay. So <clears throat> we see many videos uh, on different platforms mm -hmm. that are showing how they are hunting this, those men on Ukrainian streets, or even they go into shopping centers right now um, to then send them to the slaughter to the front line. Yeah. How long do you think this will go on in Ukraine? Um, again, uh, we can now confidently, confidently state what is Russia's strategy. It was impossible to state uh, first two, three months. Now it is absolutely clear it will continue until Ukraine completely denied any kind of the mobilization potential. And I, as I already stated, it will sound horrible, but this is the reality of war. That is why war is a serious business. The generation which could be mobilized is being annihilated right now on the fronts. And essentially this is the degener generationalization, if you wish. Uh, what, what is happening now, denying the mobilization potential of the personnel. And then, of course, we already know a few months ago, Ukraine uh, crossed this line into which it cannot exist anymore without support from the West. The moment West support is withdrawn, it collapses. It just completely collapses. And this is not just my opinion. It's uh, mm -hmm. So in this case, Russia, do not forget, there are casualties are fairly light for the scale of this operation on the Russian side. So Russia will continue it as long as it takes to demilitarize, not Ukraine, but NATO. Uh, Ukraine is demilitarized. And funny that you ask me because it's a good question because I just made a video and uploaded it. It's about the, precisely this issue. It's not about Ukraine, it's about NATO. Many people don't understand that. And uh, there's very little left which West can do now. And then we already have this situation with Republicans raising hell in US Congress. In, so we have, the, and today Duda, Anji Duda says, oh no, we're not sending any uh, planes. We don't have any, you know. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry to interrupt you. They already like Lego pieces. They sent Polish planes to Ukraine through Germany in parts. In yeah, parts. Yeah, but these are MiG-29s. They're not saying that they're not sending any more F-16s. And again, F-16 is a completely different uh, 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 aircraft. You have to teach uh, them. And Ben Wallace today, this idiot for, who is the Minister of Defense of the United Kingdom, he stated, we're not sending anything. And the question is not that they are have change of heart. No, the question is that they really don't have any. You know, and that is uh, the thing which many people do not understand. You will see my video today, and I speak about Poland, 
precisely. And I just give the simple numbers, comparison. And so, and it's just not, Poland is just part of it, you know, but you suddenly have those people from France, from United Kingdom, from Italy beginning to understand where they have been put in by the United States. Well, it's their problem, I'm sorry, you know, it's they should have thought about it. And that's what it defines now, the end game, so to speak. And the end game is Mr. Tolstoy, uh, the grand-grandson of uh, Leo Tolstoy and member of State Duma state a couple of days ago. We're going to do it as long as it takes until we completely demilitarize everything. And there was an uh, issue of the uh, uh, 1997 uh, borders of NATO and things of this nature. Russia is in it for big time gains and gain. And that is the demilitarization of NATO. So let's go into Poland, Andrei. Mm -hmm. um, I try to report in like little doses <laughs> besides the views from Russia, which I think are very important for people to see this country. I try to report some facts from Poland. Mm -hmm. And I know that at this stage, what they are doing, again, I truly believe they're not going to succeed with this. However, they are trying not only to militarize, but to um, have those military health commissions for people who finish their exams at school right after Easter. How cruel is this? I mean, what a BS. Yeah. So they are trying to wait until spring, then go on until July 21st, which most of those young men will probably go like to other European countries for vacation. And it's like showing the finger to everyone because yeah. that's how they are. So my question to you is this. They are trying to prolong it as far as the human potential to throw into it from Poland. This is my, my individual observation. I don't, observation. Think, yeah. I don't think they're going to succeed. I also think uh, that this is very strategic, psychological operation from their side, trying to see another level of compliance and ability of a human being, if they can participate, if they are into computer games, you know, stuff yeah. like this. What do you think, looking at all of this, an absolute um, arrogance of those Polish politicians right now, what do you think might come out of it? Do you think Russia will ever, be, besides Zakharova just nailing it as always, uh, respond to it, not just with words, but with something else. It's all about, I think, about Kresy, obviously. It's all about, as I already stated, uh, Western Ukraine. And um, when you look at this, just to give you one very interesting thing, Mr. Sierto uh, uh, of the, uh, the foreign minister of Hungary has been in, not in Moscow, in Minsk a few days ago, in Minsk, in Belarus, Mr. Sierto, foreign minister of uh, Hungary, what he was talking there about, you know, and then suddenly we have the situation with uh, obviously the uh, military build up in Belarus. It is probably to forestall too many arrogant movement, uh, movements uh, from Poland. And do not forget, Pol Poles, Polish people, from Washington DC, they are still viewed as a cannon fodder. They fought to the last Ukrainian now, they will be ready to fight to the last poll, you know? They don't care. And many people do not understand that. In Poland, whatever this uh, political elite, current Polish political elite thinks, uh, they are basically uh, slaves, you know? They are slaves. They are ready to, uh, you know what? Uh, Let's remember what his name, Morawiecki or whoever. No, no, yes, no. Morawiecki. No, no, no Sikorsky, yeah. Sikorsky. Oh, Sikorsky, Sikorsky. yes. Yeah, Radosław Sikorsky. That basically, mm -hmm. he admitted it. And this is mm -hmm. a very famous speech which was recorded on the tape and then started to circulate. And it was private admission of his. He said, we did fellatio on the United States. We are nobody. We are their hordes. Yeah, you can look it up. It's, it's there. It's famous. It went through all major news outlets. They know what they are uh, in for. And do they care about uh, like regular polls? No. 
They don't. I mean, they are globalists, part of the globalists. They, they're not even elite. They are the people who are at the entrance door. They are doormats, you know? And they want to see themselves as great as this. No, they are nobodies. And if they need to sacrifice the nation, they will. But even today, when Duda starts to kind of pedal back, you begin to understand that they, you know what, God forbids, if it happens something that they uh, send some kind of the real Polish contingent or regular troops. We know many Poles have been killed, volunteers, so to speak, in Ukraine. But I mean, Russia will absolutely not tolerate any kind of the regular Polish armed forces entering until it is decided. And as I already stated, should have been Poland more cooperative and less hostile, guess what? Russians would have said already by now, probably, yeah, yeah, take this, you know, it's yours, <laughs> just take it. And, but now the political uh, uh, balance, so to speak, is such that uh, until Russia says yes, and if Russia says yes now, you know, nobody knows what's gonna happen. And uh, I've learned from what I hear from Poland right now, and uh, <laughs> they are not in a good mood. You know, they, have, they probably begin to understand, or maybe they understood from the get go, you know, that they are basically cannon fodder, you know. And, uh, Andrea, I have to tell you, I didn't post it yet today. I will. Uh, I'm reporting that I reported that Biden is coming to Poland for yeah. the anniversary. And uh, today, actually, I recorded a video I will post bef before, mm -hmm. after, after we record ours, um, that Zelensky officially. Of, because he was in Poland many times, we know, but officially he's coming to Poland the same time with Biden and Biden is going to perform another speech uh, very much similar to the one he gave uh, over a year ago, which made me sick to my stomach, yeah, yeah. but watching him in, in my home country, right, you know, so, so here is the question now, Belarus, mm -hmm. they closed the border. Poland closed the border with Belarus. It's a complete chaos on the border because the truck drivers, they don't really yeah, know the yeah. transportation. It's a mess. What do you think, how this is going to affect any future um, movements with, with this operation? Like, what, what do you think in your mind, like stra strategically, what is the reason? Um, let me put it this way. The West and... Uh, completely ran out of any options short of the nuclear war. They cannot start their regular war. They will be defeated. And I'm on record for many years. They simply don't have resources. My video today is again about resources. NATO doesn't have resources to fight the war against Russia in Eastern Europe and not be defeated utterly. So what's left? All kinds of symbolic gestures. Let's impose the sanctions. Nobody cares about those sanctions. Yeah, impose whatever you want. No one gives a crap about it. Yeah. So let's do, let's, you know, remove some more monuments. Let's close the border. Let's close this. Okay, sure. Yeah, go right ahead. Shoot yourself in the foot. You know, Russians don't care. Belarusians, uh, we, it's a separate dynamics between Belarusia, Belarus and Russia obviously there because of Lukashenko, but Lukashenko is not going anywhere. He will have to face that. And he's already facing geopolitical realities that without Russia, Belarus is not going to exist as the independent state in the sense that it has its own political system established. So he knows he's uh, in Russia, he has a guarantor of survival of Belarus as such. And when you look at this, it's like, what's next? Will they, you know, start cussing, you know, with their bad words at Russia? Sure, it's all symbolic. There's nothing left in, there is nothing in arsenal. They cannot send their uh, airplanes because they don't have airplanes. The ones which they would probably would try to send, they will be shut down. They cannot send tanks. I spoke today about tanks from Poland. This idiot, Mike Abzizinski and her hubby, new hubby, John Scarborough on MSNBC were talking about how Poland is leading in terms of helping. Helping with what? That's the point. They don't even understand the scale of the war. In the, if Russia comes, and again, Russia is using merely 10, 15% of its force. They still do not understand this. That the fact is even mobilization of these 300 plus thousand people, it was partial mobilization and it was very selective. 
These were people who already went through serious military and even combat service, you know? They still don't get it. Russia can mobilize right now within three months up to two and a half million people and they will be armed. They will be, uh, it's like they simply do not understand the order of the numbers. And that is why some people do obviously, but if you look attentively in, for the la in the last week, the narrative changed in Western media so dramatically. You know, before that Russia was what? Losing two, three divisions a day. You know, Moscow was about to be surrounded by Ukrainian forces. And, you know, so mm -hmm. they were running mm -hmm. already the act of capitulation in Kremlin. And then suddenly, a week ago, like switch was, you know, uh, turned and they're like, oh mm -hmm. yeah, they're winning, they're advancing here, they're advancing there. They, it, it's like, sure. The only thing- How they, but but however, they are still pushing this narrative, Andrei, in Poland. It's almost like a replay of Ukraine. We are building the strong army. Our army will be the strongest. Yeah. You know, like they did with, they are still creating the same narrative. It's like deja vu. Deja vu, the yeah, same, absolutely. The same thing. It's like, are, are you trying to make Poland like the next Ukraine now? Yes, exactly. That's what they are trying to do. That's what they are trying to do. And again, Poland cannot anymore out of own resources build anything. Poland produces some tanks, you know, it can build, you know, some small vessels, but uh, it doesn't have any more aerospace industry. It doesn't have real, uh, so it, it, it is all about, you know, whipping people into this frenzy, you know, in this nationalist frenzy and then say, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, our equipment is not good enough or we don't have it. I already spoke about it today in my video. Poland already sent out all remaining 260 T-72 it used to have, all were mm -hmm. annihilated. So it sent another something hundred, whatever is left. So Poland is left now with only a few- Nothing. Actually, yeah. Mm -hmm. and the they are waiting, and they, sorry to, they are waiting for something to come in years from now. I know, yeah. They, and they might not even get it, you know, because I can totally see in the few, Years. I'm not talking about European Union. It's done. It's dead. It's the fact of that, and soon it will be de jure uh, dead. But if you're looking at the um, at NATO, NATO is a. Uh, I mean, it's not what they try to portray themselves. You know, and you mm -hmm. know my books. I warned about it from the get go. They don't have resources. Mm -hmm. What are mm -hmm. they going to fight with? Poland at this stage has only 50 operational combat aircraft. 50 operational combat aircraft. It's about a week of work for Russian air defense and Russian air force. What they are thinking mm -hmm. about. So there you go. It's just, you, you cannot even like wrap your mind around it. I know. Like I know. logically, logically thinking, like I am absolutely not an expert in any of it, but just using common sense. Common sense, absolutely. It's all about common sense. And uh, uh, it's about basic math, basic math. You know, comparing, you know, 100 is larger than 10, you know, and it's so obvious, but this is not how they uh, try to impose the, their virtual reality. And again, mm -hmm. you're absolutely correct. They are trying to prime Poland to be the next Ukraine. In other matter, <laughs> Russians will not go to Poland. Russians don't need Poland. You know, it's uh, what to do what? But Okay, but what, what Russia you think will do, and that was actually my question before in a way, if, if they will be so arrogant and somehow, I hope not, will push officially Polish soldiers there using some, um, you know, sabotage story as usually it, it goes, right? Yeah. What do you think Russia will do? The moment Poland enters Ukraine, Article 5 is null and void of NATO and Poland becomes a single country which do, does it on its own. And that completely changes dynamics. Poland will not have support of NATO. That's the whole thing because officially by doctrine and by the documents, NATO is a defensive alliance. Apart from the fact that many people don't understand what article five means, it does, it's not obligatory. Article 5, five merely states that each state of NATO decides on its own 
how to do and how to participate. You might even go and not participate at all. And that's what many people do not understand. The moment Poland enters the other country, Article 5 is null and void because it's attack of NATO on something else. And Poland becomes merely a single state which participates in the war, period. And of course, you can immediately say that the moment that happens, NATO will break up because uh, nobody would want to go and die for Poland. You know, it's so obvious. Can you imagine French rushing to support Poland? Uh, yeah, it's like, so it's ridiculous, you know. No, but let, let's, let's finish on this topic here and I will have one more question. Um, it just came to my mind, Andre, that perhaps what they are trying to do, I'm talking from this lizard minds of Polish politicians. Yeah. Um, that they are trying not only to create this fear-based agenda uh, and this programming into people's minds um, to set them, prepare them for something that is actually not going to happen, for them to accumulate as much money through those uh, contracts with uh, potential future purchases, yeah, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So they are trying to, to really they are doing this under the umbrella of the story, but it's really all about generating uh, cash. That's what yes. it is. Yeah, and and you're absolutely correct. It's all about accumulating as much uh, power and money as they yeah. can. But there is another thing. If you look at the American economy, and uh, it's in, in an extremely bad shape because dollar, the US dollar is de facto dead. Many people still don't understand, but it is that as the reserve currency, which means horrendous consequences for the United States. But they are one trick ponies in the beltway in Washington, D.C. They remember how the United States became rich after World War II. Mm -hmm. They will desire nothing more than the real good hot war inside the euro because that will allow to pull US economy out of this hole which it is now. Of course, as always, they cannot calculate because they're stupid people. They graduated all those worthless uh, economics and political science departments from Ivy League, but this is what they want. How you can do that? Well, Poland is, has a good record. So let's throw them and then see what happens because once Europe is destroyed, guess what? They think that they can repeat the issue, which actually was the issue of land lease and a restoring Marshall Plan. And guess what? Things which pulled the United States out of the debt. The United States still ended up with the debt after the World War II. But the United States ended up obviously with the Bretton Woods and reserve currency, dollar being reserve currency. That's the plan. They are primitive. They are stupid. They're very uncultured. You have to understand most of those people in State Department, they are very uncultured people. They do not have the uh, appropriate cultural level. Mm -hmm. They're not very mm -hmm. well read. They're primitive. Shallow, that's very the, shallow. Yep. Oh yeah, that's the only requirement for going to the Ivy League into some diplo well, diplomatic core of United States is butt of jokes. You know, It's like American diplomat is oxymoron. It's uh, usually the moron who knows very little of anything. You know. So, and yeah, that's their plan. <coughs> Obviously, what is taught as history in the history departments in any Ivy League or Oxford in the United Kingdom, it's primarily crap. They are narratives and they, I mean, it doesn't exist anymore. This field of the history and general culture, which goes through the universities in the United States, it doesn't exist anymore. And when you look at this, yeah, what do you expect? There are primitives there, you know, and they, that's, they think that they can repeat it. But then again, you know, they thought about it in February last year. And guess what? The plans went out of the window because again, I am a record. They cannot calculate. They cannot freaking count, you know, because they believe in this GDP crap. You know, they still think that American economy is the largest in the world. It's absolutely not true. It's not even close, you know, but yeah, they believe that. You cannot explain to morons that nobody cares what you make on the Wall Street because it's their virtual money. It's nothing. Mm -hmm. 
But mm -hmm. when you produce, when Russia produces amount of steel, the same as the United States produced, the, the only thing which United States used to have was obviously great accomplishments, great buildings, great infrastructure, which was left by people such as Eisenhower, you know, and even those in the 60s who were building the country. Now, uh, I mean, come on, look at the country, look at the United States, the infrastructure is collapsing. Look at most American cities, Jesus Christ, it's, they're filled with feces, they, I mean, it's horrible. It's a third yes. world. And they, they still think that they are that great. What do you expect from them? They live within the beltway. They, as I already stated, neocons are extremely arrogant and uncultured people. They are. Look at the American elites. They so, Andrei, let's actually, this is brilliant how, how you went there because my last question was about um, gold. Mm -hmm. I know you follow the economic situation oh, very closely. Yeah. yeah, but you have a lot of understanding. I was wondering your thoughts on this as dollar is collapsing. And I just want to say to you, when I look at the ruble now, this is interesting too, because in those exchange shops, you mm -hmm. know, bank is different. I see, and then again, depends on the area of the city. I'm not yeah, everywhere. Yeah. Close to me, ruble now is, one dollar is, 73 rubles yeah. it went up a little and then euro is about 82 that's mm -hmm. what i saw let me ask you what do you think when they going to because i think this is is just inevitable has to happen revalue the true value of gold because they have been suppressing this gold for so yeah. long yeah when when this gonna happen what do you think or what will be the the, the trigger that will finally make them say okay which is again not the real price because they're gonna give yeah. like slightly higher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, honestly, I don't know, but uh, the event which will bring it about will be, of course, geopolitical, not purely economic event. And we know what is go coming to the United States economically. I'm not talking about Europe. Europe is done. It's over with. You know, uh, Germany is done. You know, and. But uh, in terms of gold issue, um, some event which either some decisive event which can trigger it in Ukraine, but judging by the speed with which they're trying to re rephrase or reframe the whole situation there, including suddenly reporting some real news from there, I think so it could be around what happens around China, you know. They still are obsessed with the China issue. So, but other than that, I cannot say much. I'm not specialist in gold. I know you correctly stated the price was suppressed because it's all about speculation and dollar. But it becomes increasingly known that dollar now went from, I believe, even you can look it up in SWIFT reports. I believe from five years ago, when it was like 75% of their uh, accounts and uh, uh, mutual accounts and payments globally, it is now somewhere around 30%, 30, 35%. It's a dramatic drop in the uh, 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 payments in dollar. And guess what? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just to give you one example, India a year ago already insisted that stop this crap with dollar, let's pay ru a rupee and rubles. And guess what? <laughs> this is what happens now. China now is following suit. So we are kind of, we have all those arrows pointing to something which is gonna happen geopolitically, which will remove it. Another matter that they might go and uh, default in the United States and it's coming too. Yeah. Can you can you explain this because I'm not I don't really know what it is default. Um, default is very simple. It's an ability to service your uh, um, uh, debt. And United okay. States, as you know, issues. The United States, main expert of the United States is not technology or uh, oil. It's uh, debt. United States exports inflation and debt. But now that national uh, in a uh, debt of the United States, which is they raise what, it. 33 trillion. Guess what? Just to pay percentage of this debt, it comes now down to more than $1 trillion a year. And that means to service it, what, how can you do it? 
you cannot create the uh, uh, trade balance in your favor anymore. So what do you do? You sell your treasuries. You issue more debt to people and people who buy US treasuries, they should understand those will never be paid back. I mean, and many begin to understand this. That's why China started from August, 2022, dumping treasuries as much as possible. Russia doesn't have any treasuries. Well, actually Russia has about what? $9 billion, it's pocket change, it's nothing. You know, China used to have 1.3 trillion. Now it's down to what, 900 billion. Japan will be, and you know, Japan will be the one which will de- carry the brunt of it, which will kill its economy because they have still like above one trillion dollars. But yes, nobody wants to buy those treasuries anymore either. <laughs> so Andrei, how- but tell me, can ruble be backed by gold? It's de facto right now is being backed by gold and by the industrial capability of Russia and the resources. We already have. It de facto, it exists. Gas ruble, we have already oil ruble, it already in existence. It exists as such, you know, supported by the resources and supported by gold. So yes. So then there you have it. So this actually Russia might, it's Russia that actually might affect this moment when they are have they have to yeah. announce the, the real price of gold. Yeah, they can do that. But for now, Russia is not interested to completely collapse the United States because Russia cares about the world world peace, you know. And finally, China, oh and goodness. that's what many people do not understand what they're dealing with here. You know, uh, the same as the United States uh, dollar, primarily since 70s, once Nixon detached it, decoupled it from gold, it was built around their uh, perception of the United States industrial capability and its military capability, which primarily Mm -hmm. was propaganda. Russia, unlike the United States, has a real military capability, which, you know, it's not just nuclear, you know, it's the combined arms, it's Mm -hmm. the massive military industrial complex. And China finally got the way for this. And that's what many people do not understand. In Russian-Chinese relations, it is China, which is a junior partner, especially because China is totally dependent you know, for the market, I mean, to a large degree, in the United States. Russia is not. The United States is not the top 10 uh, in Russia trade partners. Poland has more trade with Russia than the United States. And you know, Russia is the only country in the world, the only, the other one, possibly United States and Canada. But Russia is the only other country in the world which is completely autarkic. That means she can out totally out of own resources, completely maintain its economy, technologically, you know, agriculturally. And you know yourself, they continue to uh, spew this bullshit about uh, Russian suffering from sanctions. You you saw yourself everything. Russia is the largest exporter of the wheat in the world, you know, and many people still cannot wrap their brains around, you know, that. And that's... mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Actually, can I tell you, in between my trips to Russia, I was in a few other countries, Uh one of which which was UK. And it was in London when actually Uh I saw many empty shelves. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know it's but, but not here, not really here. Oh, no, I don't no. see it. Uh, Russia is m- number one exporter of wheat, and she covers her agricultural needs across the main uh, staples be that milk, bread, meats, poultry, you know, uh, fish. 100%, except for the beef. I believe Russians still are not good at the filet mignon. But they're already making those, you know, ribeye steaks pretty well. So yeah, uh, there are some. When you look at this, I mean, what they were thinking about, they yeah. just it, the economists. They do this. Not- this the scale, right, Andre? The scale yeah. of the country. Twelve is it? Twelve time zones. Twelve yeah. time zones. It, what? Anyway, I, I just tell you, I absolutely enjoy and always feel great talking to you because I'm learning so much as well from you. Okay. So much and. And I, you know, I, it's, it's almost like watching, we are living in such a times, like <laughs> we are watching this, like it's not, it's not really happening. Like, can this be real, can what they are doing? Real. I know. And now take this uh, from me, 
not only I lived through the collapse of the Soviet Union, that's why I ended up in the United States. Now I have to live through this. It's just, oh, come on. I mean, I didn't oh, bargain for that much fun in my life. You know? so, but it is happening, you know? So yeah, it's just like you scratch your head and it's like, oh my gosh. As they say in uh, China, God forbids you from living in the interesting times. I mean, the only, most of my life were, interesting times you know it's just like okay yes you're making a full circle andre yeah oh yeah uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I i have someone i heard someone uh one of my favorite actually people on youtube who said this is like historians wet dream yeah so it is well. it is it is so yeah. so it must be for some people <laughs> yeah. andre so people can find you on your blog Mm -hmm. smoothie x12 can i ask you i never ask you this why did you choose this name smoothie okay explaining i many years ago it was almost like 15 if not more years ago i don't even remember what kind of the there was a military forum uh english language military forum and i needed to register there i wanted to go there and comment so if i go andrei marcianov taken andrei m then taken, Martianov A taken. So off I go, and you know what? I go just all kinds of iteration. Taken, 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 taken. Then I'm smoothie, just for the heck of it. Taken, smoothie X, taken. Smooth, <laughs> and I'm already now, you know what? Like screw that, you know. Smoothie X one, taken. Smoothie X twelve, free that's it and since then i became quite famous <laughs> on that forum and everybody knew me that as smoothie x12 i said i should have taken some porn movie you know uh, you know uh, <laughs> call some like that and uh since then it's stuck and now it became kind of trademark you know and whenever we go to some store and you know uh and we say, you know, buy something like Home Depot and say, can mm -hmm. you give us your email? And I mean to say, this is not only fans email. People wouldn't like to see me doing that for, it's just my email and I smoothie X12 and they begin to laugh. Like, you know, I'm some kind of porn star from Facebook or TikTok. So, but yeah, this is how it happened. So, it's <laughs> Thank you. Totally oh my goodness. Innocent. Yeah. And this 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 is like totally undercover name. Yeah, it's like yeah, I I spent like literally half an hour trying to find I all combinations, you know, and it's like uh, uh something something taken. Mm -hmm. It's uh, oh, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and uh, <laughs> unbelievable. I I understand. Thank you so much. And actually, just one more thing before we end. I am planning a meetup in Moscow with my russian um subscribers and i it's very good you know to learn from people so i'm yeah, excited yeah. and I'm, I'm meeting them in this depot place it's like a food court this yeah. saturday and i i actually just announced on my channel it will be across from the smoothie counter okay, <laughs> so there, then I was yeah, there you go, I, there know, go. I know it's just so it is so funny but yeah i have to explain and you know what I decided it's stuck and it's there and it became kind of, you know, my call sign. Okay, Smoothie X12 well is fine. <laughs> so people can find you on the on the blog. You have blog on Smoothie X12 and your YouTube channel has this name. I will attach the links down below. Sure, also sure. to also to Amazon to get uh, Andrei's books. And Andre, just out of curiosity, this book that you are working on uh, this year, it will be published? Uh, no, I don't think. Well, I will try because uh, it's being delayed because I need the uh, what is called intermittent military solution in terms of Ukraine. And it's uh, probably will when the Russian army reaches the Dnieper left side that because obviously it's a long process now because Russia in it, not for Ukraine, as I already stated, but my book obviously is about the special military operation and things related to it and geopolitically. And mm -hmm. I almost like you know you write there something and things change tomorrow you know so you mm -hmm. have to kind of you know approach mm -hmm. it on a slow manner so but mm -hmm. i hope to finish it this year then if it's published it's pro probably uh going to be next year I'll okay russian happen. russian too andre in russian as no, well no english is always english yeah yeah so okay. it's
I'm okay. my audience is primarily in the Western and around the world, not in Russia. Although I speak to some news outlet in Russia too. Okay. I'm, I'm meeting, but again, it's English speaking. Russia today, tomorrow, and so 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 on. Thank you so so much for your time today. Really appreciate and uh, for being my guest. It's it's truly an yes. honor for me yes, to my have you. My pleasure, on. Anya. Always, anytime. Thank you everyone for watching and until next time.